Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Daniel made up his mind not to let himself become ritually unclean by eating the food and drinking the wine of the royal court. So he asked Aspenaz to help him. I want to start by sharing a simple fact of life that goes, whatever you do, we are slowly transformed day by day by it. The historical setting of the book of Daniel is in 605 BC, where the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar besieged Judah and extracted Daniel and other Jews and brought them to Babylon along with other captives among the Judean nobility. At the end of verse 4, we see King Nebuchadnezzar reveal his overall strategy. And listen to this, it was to teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now, this is more than simply learning uh, a, the local history, the national history and the language like a UK citizenship test. The intent was to immerse these people so deeply into Babylonian culture and that's their fashion, food, music, arts, writings, modes of thinking, ideas, proverbs, political systems, and yes, language, so deeply that a total identity transformation occurred. So linking back to the fact that you are, whether you like it or not, being transformed by what you're exposed to and what you do. And I think this passage is so important to the backdrop to understand why we are starting as a church with a collective month of fasting. In a recent preach that Tom shared, he highlighted the news from the Office of National Statistics that found that there was less than half the population who identified themselves as Christians compared to 59% in 2011. What we need to ask ourselves is does the culture, and that's the accepted behavior amongst a group of people you live out, reflect the culture that's in scripture? Ultimately, and it comes down to this, we're either submitting to the mass culture around us or the canon of scripture that's in God's word and his principles. What I love about being a Christian, a follower of Christ, is that God's teachings, Jesus' teachings, his standards and his principles are always applicable. But if we're honest, sometimes we like to follow our own standards and our own principles. Daniel's commitment to his God-honoring culture is an encouragement to be congruent in our identity as Christians. God's response to Daniel, Daniel's faithfulness, demonstrates that the Most High God rules even at the height of the kingdoms of men. So my final point is a question before we go back into worship. I've been thinking personally as a family what does it mean to be a rose? Now, my surname is Rose, and I've been asking myself, what does it mean to be a rose? As we head back into worship, I want you to ponder on, what does it mean to be a Christian? How, does, how is your lifestyle mapping onto what we learn and see in the Bible? 